bang, bang, what's up, lunch money time. While Walsh is trying to get rich, the rest of us is trying to get our lunch money right. I'm here with the beautiful, intelligent, looks like she's going to the beach, Polina, Evi Lova, Marinova, Pompliano, P-I-M-P, what up? Fun fact, today he was helping me with this one strap, and he was like, stop moving. And I apparently didn't stop moving, and then he said, pretend you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just got to get it across. It's like talking to a child. So what do you do? You talk in child language. All right, don't forget, Lunch Money yeah. is now sponsored by BlockFi. BlockFi has three products. You can buy and sell crypto. Watch out. Get money, get paid. Bitcoin, pop it. You can buy and sell crypto. You can deposit crypto and earn a or get a U.S. dollar loan. Or you can deposit crypto and earn up to 8.6% APY in an interest-bearing account. No-brainer. BlockFi.com slash lunch money. Go do it. There's risk. Do your research. But go check out BlockFi. Speaking of Bitcoin, what's up with the billionaires? The billy boys? Wait, that's not Bitcoin. Okay. It doesn't have to be Bitcoin. So a new tax is being proposed by progressive lawmakers and activists that would impose a new form of capital gains tax on New Yorkers with a billion dollars or more in assets. Sponsors of the plan say it would raise $5.5 billion a year, which would be used for a new unemployment insurance fund for those impacted by COVID. Wow. What do you think about this? Um, well, it's called the new tax is called it's part of a new make billionaires pay campaign. How about we make the government pay? Yeah, I would that like would the be government. that would be a great idea. For, Let's make the government. government pay. You want to know why we can make the government pay? Because well, the government put paying? these people on the street. Aren't they already paying? No, the gov. No, 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 no. It's just so we're all super clear. There's two things that we need to pay attention to right here. First of all, there's two ways that the government steals your money. One, they make you pay taxes. Things like federal income tax used to not exist. They literally created that to take your money. So they can physically take the money from you and require it with the threat of going to jail. If you don't give them the money, they can put you in jail. That's the first way they take your money. The second way, and this is what they're doing right now, is they play this mirage of saying, I'm going to lower taxes, but I'm going to print money. When they print money, they're stealing your wealth too. They're devaluing your currency. And so they're literally, inflation is this hidden tax. And so that's what they've done is in order to fund a bunch of this unemployment and all of the stimulus packages, all this kind of stuff, they're stealing from you, me, and everybody else. I, I feel like if this law is passed, if this tax is passed, all the billionaires are leaving New York. And also it's kind of, listen, currently taxpayers pay capital gains tax on assets only when they sell. The new policy would tax any gain in value for an asset during the calendar year, regardless of whether it's sold. I think that's a little it's absurd, stupid. But- but um it's like saying hey my house i bought it like i, I bought an apartment right. for a hundred thousand dollars the apartment is now because the market went up in value worth two hundred thousand dollars although i didn't get any more money i have to pay a tax on the change in value literally this is the stupidest but, but thing i've ever heard. What, what worries me is okay cool right now it's billionaires but tomorrow it could be me who is making like not that much money of and course. suddenly I'm paying taxes. By the way, hello, newsflash, socialists are coming. They're trying to implement this nonsense. But the, the ultimate thing, and this is where I think people have to uh, kind of all rally together. I don't care if you're rich, poor, old, young, what color your skin is, what creed you have, creed. anything. Yeah, religion. I don't yeah. care where you are in your life. The one thing that everyone can agree on is that billionaires – they created value and captured it for themselves, right? Or their families. They are some of the best capital allocators in the world. And what the politicians want to do is take money from the best capital allocators. Sorry, that wasn't an eye roll. I was just looking at the sun. And put, it, <laughs> and put it in the hands of the worst capital allocators, which is the government. Anything the government does is inefficient. incredibly inefficient. What are the, the idea that we're going to take money from the best capital allocators and give it to the worst capital allocators is comical. And it all hides behind this thing of, we need to help people out. No, what we need to do is for the government to get out of the way and let the free market run. By the way, you know how the government's like, oh, we want everybody, we want you guys to be citizens, green cards, become a citizen, whatever. Do you know how expensive it is to actually become a citizen? You have to be a green card holder for five years and then you pay and pay and pay all this crap to the government. And then they send you a social security card and have your name misspelled. What's yeah, that about? <laughs> a, a, again, the, it, it's just the idea of taking money from the people who have created the most value in society and then giving it to a government who literally 
is incompetent. Remember, they spent, you want to know where you can get a billion dollars from? Here, here's, a, here's a great idea. They sent over a billion dollars to dead people with the stimulus uh, payments. Was it a billion? Over a billion dollars. So they want to raise $5 billion, right? There's a billion. I just found a billion. Hey, here's another billion. Why don't you go get rid of all the bureaucracy that you have in all these all organizations? Right. Rant over. Ready? <laughs> Crypto banks. What up? Bitcoin so, billionaires. Billy boys. So uh, there's interpretive letter from the office of the comptroller of the currency, the OCC, uh, which serves to charter, regulate, and supervise national banks. The letter clarifies that national banks have the authority to provide fiat bank accounts and cryptocurrency custodial services to cryptocurrency businesses. So isn't it true that only like two banks could handle crypto stuff before all this? The whole idea was most of the federally regulated banks, right? They're, they're regulated by this OCC. They would basically say, oh, we can't do anything with crypto because the OCC won't let us. There's one major change that occurred over the last 60 days, which is Brian Brooks, who used to be the chief legal officer of Coinbase, is now the head of the, he's the acting comptroller of the currency. He's in charge. So there's a Bitcoiner in Wait, the hen where house. Was he, where was he before? And they let him in. He was the chief legal officer of Coinbase. Oh. Yes. And so now he's in charge. And so he issued a clarification. He actually didn't change anything. He just issued a clarification saying that banks are allowed to custody digital assets, cryptocurrencies, et cetera. And what that does now is there is going to set off. Banks are going to build out custodial services. Banks are going to go acquire crypto companies. And also you're going to see crypto companies try to create software to sell into the banks. But all we are getting to this, this is, is huge. Of course, this is an inflection point. Again, every currency will be digital, digital dollar, digital yen, digital euro, Bitcoin, Libra, all, every currency in the world will be digital. And the competition will not be at the technology layer. It will be at the monetary policy layer. So, Bitcoin has the superior monetary policy and Bitcoin will be the global reserve currency. So can you tell me, so before, if I was an individual and I had Bitcoin, I couldn't just deposit it in my bank. E even worse is not only could you not deposit you it with your bank, buy a lot of times they would literally shut down your account if they saw that you were buying Bitcoin, right? But now all of a sudden it's legal, right? Wow. And, and there's a clarification saying that the bank can hold your cryptographic keys, meaning that I can have in an account, I can have my cash position yeah. and I got my digital currency position. But well, that changes everything. Plain is going to be an expert by the end. Do of I need this. some Bitcoin? I think we uh, we're doing all right. Oh, okay. So wait, why, why are you, why are you eyebrowing? Cause you're supposed to be the non risk taker. I'll be the risk taker. Yeah. But now that banks are, I'm like, I'm like, should oh. I convert all of the money into Bitcoin? No. Okay. What's going on with cereal? <laughs> So New York Times will said it will acquire cereal productions, the maker of the hit podcast cereal, the true crime one, uh, a deal that aims to further the newspaper's podcasting ambitions. And the transaction could be worth as much as 50 million, depending on milestones and performance metrics. Eh, everyone's comparing this to Spotify deal uh, with Joe Rogan, but it's very different. Spotify was basically acquiring a podcast or in that case, a licensing deal. Um, they've acquired a number of other podcasts to be exclusive to their technology platform, right? Spotify is a platform, not a publisher. New York Times is a publisher, not a platform. And therefore, my guess is that they'll keep serial on all the different platforms. They want as many views as possible. They're just a publisher. So this is the same thing as like buying a, a newsletter, buying a podcast, buying, you know, any sort of media property. Um, it, it's not similar or comparative, in my opinion, to uh, the Spotify type deal, which is an ex exclusivity for a platform um, and okay, kind of eats away at what a podcast really should be. Doesn't this just drive home the idea further that IP is important? Of course, IP is important. Maybe I need to go call the New York Times. What, what, what would happen if I worked at the New York Times? I'd be fired in <laughs> under 30 seconds. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's cool. Cereal obviously is super, super powerful. Um, I forgot that they did because I didn't listen. I only listened to that one season with uh, the high school kid who reportedly killed his girlfriend. Uh, I didn't listen to the rest of them, but I guess they keep putting out new seasons, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, look, the New York Times has made a couple of other acquisitions in the space. So it, it's uh, it's cool to see. $50 million is a lot of money for, uh, for, for a media property like that. So let's see what happens. Cool. Ready? What do we have? Yeah. Tesla will build its next gigafactory near Austin, Texas. When I have a pen, it just looks like I'm smart. Okay. What's going on with Tesla? Everybody knows the truth. Um, 
Next, Gigafactory near Austin, Texas. So this is yet another example of a company slash billionaire leaving a state that wants to tax the crap out of them. No? No, they're not leaving. What do you mean? This is just a new factory. So they're not actually, oh, they're not moving Tesla out but of he California. Didn't, he did not choose California yes. for his next. Yeah, he basically chose a place that, there's a couple of things I think that uh, Elon Musk kind of alluded to. One was the regulatory environment. They're much, much more, uh, about kind of uh, individual freedom, personal uh, freedom, and uh, they take a lower regulation type approach or lighter touch regulation approach than somebody like California. They got a ton of tax breaks to do this. Uh, and there's also a lot of talent in Austin, Texas. Uh, and, and so I think that ultimately this is a pretty good decision. I saw a picture of Elon Musk and uh, Governor Abbott from Texas, and they were doing the uh, the hook em horns, which I thought was pretty funny. Actually, this is the wolf pack. I think hook em horns is like that. That's oh, little- my God. Little detail for Please you. get out of your college football. NC State, Texas. Yeah, this is definitely Texas. And that's Oklahoma. Okay. See, wait, how, can see I, how Oklahoma takes can the, I just say, the horns. In the, and, in the comments yesterday, there and were. And then all, this is Florida Gators. Go ahead. And this is dogs. Uh, <laughs> exactly. 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 Okay. You can't. Literally, it's so stupid oh that when God. you do it, you start laughing. All right, listen. So yesterday in the comments, a lot of people said they wanted us to move to Austin, Texas, which I personally am not opposed to. We're going to go look. Hey, so don't we tell in our secrets? We're going to go look. Oh my God. I'm never telling you anything ever. All right. Again. What's up? <laughs> what's hold up? On, hold on. And uh, I love, I love this quote from Musk. He said, we're going to make it a factory. That's going to be stunning. It's right on the Colorado river. We're actually going to have a boardwalk over you, biking, hiking trails. It's going to basically be an ecological paradise. Look, what does he think he's going to the jungle? Yeah, exactly. Who cares? So funny. Tesla's the future. Duh. Electric vehicles are obviously going to overtake gasoline vehicles. So whatever. And then we're all going to be going to. I'd buy a cyber truck. We're going to electric E formula one races. What, What would you do if I had a cyber truck? All right, what's going on with astronauts? What's going on? NASA astronauts on historic SpaceX mission aiming for an August 2nd return. So my question is, are they going to ride the same SpaceX thing or like another SpaceX thing? No, they're going to build another one in space and then come back on the No, but I don't know. Maybe NASA has something else. No, they're coming back on the same one. They're strapped into the SpaceX crew dragon capsule. Oh, gonna, no, no, no. Oh. That's millions of people watched as they were strapped. But. The, the crazy part is not that many people. Everyone likes the launches, but I feel like we should celebrate the yeah, return I just agree. as much as the launch, right? I agree. Uh, they have spent their days conducting spacewalks to upgrade the space station's hardware, as well as handling scientific experiments designed for the microgravity environment on the board on board the station. That's so cool. I love right? that they do science in space. Same. I mean, that's kind of how they got the space with science, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, and the, uh, what I don't know is I think the capsule, if I remember correctly, it falls into the ocean. Like the, basically as it, uh, as it comes back, it falls Normally, it and, there's a, and there's a um, parachute. parachute and then it lands in the water. But I thought that Musk got it where they- That's could... the rocket. Oh. The rocket already came back. Oh, right. But- Because when you shoot the rocket up, then basically the capsule keeps going. The rocket falls Wait, so, away. So we just like let it go into the ocean and pollute it like that? No, they go and they get them. There's oh, going to be oh, humans oh. in there. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just let them fall in the ocean. Just ask, screw them. See you guys later. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, no, no. What happened? So, okay. So there's this thing. Um, this woman went on Shark Tank back in 2009. And her pitch was something called Face Block. And it was these like fun face masks that would go over like when you're sick or when swine flu was in the news in 2009. And then there's surgical masks with designs on them. And then uh, and then looking back now, she said, if we could predict the future, we could all be rich. I mean, this is classic, right? Uh, Right idea, wrong time. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what happens. Timing and and, uh, which market you choose is almost more important than anything else. Like you can have a bad idea or or a not great idea and a not great team, pick the right market at the right time and you'll still be successful. You could have a fantastic team and a fantastic idea, pick the wrong market or the wrong time and you fail. So like, I don't know if she's good or not. I don't know if the idea was good or not, but just face masks in 2020 is a way better timing than face masks in 2008. It said she pitched the right product just in the wrong decade. And yeah. while her face masks are suddenly, sadly not available for purchase, she has a line of only in Silicon Valley greeting cards you can buy. So she pivoted to uh, greeting cards after. Should have stuck with the face masks. 
Imagine if she was sitting there just ready to roll with uh, a whole box full of N95 masks. Mm. All right, let's go. Oh, wait, before you say the joke, by the way, we didn't put this in here uh, in the topics, but uh, unemployment numbers today. There have now been 52.5 million Americans who have lost their job in the last four and a half months. Wow. In four and a half months, 52 million Americans have lost their jobs. That means one in three people lost their jobs over the last four and a half months. Absolutely insanity. Hopefully, as we reopen economies, people will get their jobs back. Uh, there are not 52 people, 52 million people sitting at home right now without a job. Some of them have gotten their jobs back, have started to go back to work, found new jobs, whatever. But absolutely, you know, just breathtaking number in terms of how many people have been out of work in the last four and a half months. Sad. All right, what's your joke? My joke is, why don't eggs tell jokes? Why don't eggs tell You're jokes? Get this one. I don't know. Because they'd crack each other up. <laughs> Come on, don't. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Don't pretend. Why don't to scientists trust dead. atoms? Dead. I know this one. What? Because they make everything up. See, it's not funny. It's it's, so it's, funny. it's not who's the delivery either. It's just they're not funny jokes. <laughs> when you okay, Google well, world's funniest joke, I promise you they're not funny. Why? Because you're reading them off of the internet. What you need is you need like good jokes. Okay, I'll find good Knock, jokes. knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange, you special. Orange, Guys, you this is what I, I deal with every day on a daily basis. Uh -huh. All right, before I forget. Hey, finish your joke. Orange, you going to leave me alone now? Yes. Thank you. Lunch money. That's it for today. Well, while she's trying to get rich, the rest of us trying to get our lunch money right. Please, please, please. Subscribe to the channel. I want to get to 100,000 subscribers well, by the end of August. Let's go. Get what 15, we want. 15,000 subscribers to go. Let's go. Get me to 100K. I'll be so happy. Just do it for me because then he'll be happy. He won't know it was for me. But just... See you guys tomorrow. Why do you do that? Bang, bang. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Lunch Money as much as we did. And don't forget... Lunch Money is now sponsored by BlockFi, so go check them out. There's a link in the description that you can click on. I'm an investor, a user, and a huge fan. What? You're a bigger fan of BlockFi than you are of me? BlockFi is my second favorite thing in the world behind <laughs> Polina. They've got three products. <laughs> they can give you a U.S. dollar loan. You can earn up to 8.6% interest on an interest-bearing account, or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange. I personally use the interest-bearing account. There's not very many places where you'll find up to 8.6% interest on a deposit in an interest-bearing account. Go do your own research. There's risk associated, but 8.6% is pretty compelling. So click on the link in the description. Say thanks to the folks at BlockFi. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Annoy Polina in the comments. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be kind to your friends.